Hi guys, Graham from Penguin Motors here. This one is for you Ford Crossflow guys. We took a 1700 Crossflow with a BCF2 and we wanted to upgrade it. So we've got a we've got a fairly healthy engine on a uh, standard twin choke 32 36 Weber. So the question was, what's the better upgrade? What's going to make more power? Upgrade the head or upgrade the carburetors? Which one will make more power? Which one will make more torque? Because both upgrades cost about the same amount in money. And would they make the same power? Would these add five horsepower? Would this add five horsepower? Added together, would we get 10 horsepower? Well, fortunately, I've got the answers for you. So, you ready boys? Should we have some noise? So there we go, there's our baseline, and it's fairly healthy actually. Um, we made 107.9 brake horsepower, so call it 108, and 107.8 pound foot torque, so we'll call that 108 as well. So yeah, that's pretty that's pretty healthy. Um, bear in mind, it's a fairly standard cross flow. Um, as I said earlier, we've got 1300 pistons to make it 1700 cc about 10.3 to 1 compression and a BCF2 cam. So other than the free flying exhaust manifold, and obviously we don't run an air filter here on the dyno, um, we're 24 horsepower up on the standard Ford offering. So it's fairly healthy already. So up next, let's get the 40s on it and see what difference that makes. So, who was expecting that? The fault is, we're out everywhere. Picked up talk right through the rev range. Win-win. Um, now, I bet a lot of you was, would have thought that these would have lost low down power. Um, and ultimately, that if we'd have stuck a pair of big choke 45s or 48s on, we probably would have done. But sensible, sensible size carbs, sensible size chokes, it's a win-win. Um, they pick up talk everywhere. You've got a much more efficient, longer, straighter inlet tract. And that's where the low down power comes from. And obviously that longer straighter inlet tract also makes a great top end power. So certainly, even on a standard Mexico GT head with a BCF2 cam, it is worth fitting a pair of 45s. Sorry, 40s. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna take the 40s back off and we're gonna take the head off and in its place, we're going to fit a stage three Burton big valve head and then run that up on the 32, 36 and see what we get.
So if you watch the numbers on the last video clip, you'll see that even with the 32, 36, when we put the big valve head on, we actually gained peak power. And the numbers look reasonable. But looking at the graph above me, you can see that at low RPM, the big valve head lost, lost out. It lost us torque. And it only gained us a fraction torque at our peak. Now, why is this? Well, quite simply, that the head has now got more airflow than the intake system can deal with. So, at high RPM, the freer flowing head actually helps add a bit of power, but at lower speeds, the head has got more airflow than the carburetor can supply, so the net result is a loss of torque. But really, to put it into context, what I need to do is stick the 40s back on the graph. So there we have it. That makes the picture clearer, doesn't it? Um, as we can see, the big valve head with the 3236 gets close to the peak power of 40s. But if you've got the choice of 40s or the big valve head, the 40s is a no brainer. If you're just looking from a performance perspective, Noise, fuel economy might be another matter, but looks, sound and performance, big valve head, 40s, go with 40s. But what happens if you fit both in the next clip? Wow, the combination of the big valve head and the forties really brought the top end alive. We're now 50% up on a standard engine, so we're now knocking out 126 horsepower. Really strong, definitely strong for a BCF2 cam. Peak torque's now up to 117 pound foot, so that's pretty handy too. Admittedly below 4,000 RPM, the combination of the forties and the standard head is still a better bet. But most of you guys will trade that bit of talk down there for the big urge at high revs. And in any case, all this dyno testing is done at full throttle. So I suspect in the real world, if you're not at full throttle below 4,000 RPM, the difference is probably smaller than that graph shows. But maybe that's a test for another day. If you want some more videos on this engine, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. And I'll catch you on the flip side.